Hey, welcome back guys. So Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio are two of the best investors in the world right now. Now the good news is that every three months their companies have to submit a 13F filing. And what this basically means is that they have to show all the changes they have made to their own portfolios. Now this is great for us as we get to see everything they are doing with their own money. This is also known as what the smart money is doing. Let me explain. What are we looking at? So this is a very common pattern in human behavior. You can see there's this big run up, a huge bid spike before a big drop off. Now this could be for a individual product launch. You see this as well with when companies IPO or this could be a longer term stock market bubble, but it's a pattern that repeats and repeats. You have this stealth phase, awareness stage, mania phase and then a blow off phase. Now your Ray Dalios and your Warren Buffetts are classed as the smart money as they get in really, really early. They have the best teams, best research, and they've been studying investing all their lives. Next come the big institutional investors, followed by the public. Unfortunately, this is known as the dumb money, as when everything is going up and up and up, everyone's talking about it, and this is when the general public rushing to get the investment. And normally it's the smart money that is selling to the general public at this point. As they know, it's normally followed by a big sell-off. So this video is the Q3 update to Ray Dalio's company, Bridgewater Associates. And Bridgewater Associates is the most successful hedge fund in the world. And they have done some very surprising changes this quarter, as you'll soon see. As always, if you do find anything in this video useful, be sure to drop a like. That would be much appreciated as every like does help. P.S. Always check the description below this video as I do these updates every three months, just so that you're always watching the latest version. Okay, sit back and relax guys. Let's take a look at what Ray Dalio has been doing with his own money. So here is what we're going to be looking at. We'll take a look firstly at the brand new positions they have opened up. We'll take a look at the biggest increases and reductions to their positions they already held. We'll then take a look at the full Ray Dalio portfolio as it stands right now. And we'll also measure it against the S&P 500 and see how this portfolio holds up. We'll then bring it all together to see if there's some takeaways to help us with our own investments. First up, all the new positions. So here they are, and it's in the order of from the largest to the smallest in terms of monetary value. The big three are Walmart, Procter & Gamble, and Coca-Cola, and then got Johnson & Johnson, Pepsi, and McDonald's. Now, the biggest takeaway from this slide is actually all of them. So normally, Ray Dalio's biggest positions are ETFs. So seeing all of these individual stocks pop up is actually a bit unusual. Next up, all of the positions they reduced on. So we've got the S&P 500 from Spider and iShares, and then we've got two China ETFs as well. So first up, we have the two S&P 500 ETFs. Now this is probably the biggest thing to happen in this entire Q3 update right here. The Spider S&P 500 is his largest position and he reduced it by 21%. So this is huge. And his secondary position by 63%. So he has made a massive reduction on US stocks. Now the bottom two are the China ETFs and it looks like he's made a big reduction. However, he's actually moved this into other Chinese entities as we'll see in a second. So these are the biggest increases to existing positions and the biggest talking point on this page is the emerging markets. So he's actually got three different emerging markets ETFs and he has made big increases to all of them. Now inside an emerging market ETF, normally it's about 50% China, 
before branching out into other countries like Taiwan and India. So actually, he's still betting on China through these, but with more diversification. The second position, Alibaba Group, now he increased this by 40%. So this is now nearly 5% of the entire portfolio. So he's got a big bet on Alibaba. And then to finish is the bottom one, it's Costco. So he's actually made a big increase to Costco. And funnily enough, Warren Buffett's recent update is that he sold out of Costco. So it looks like Warren Buffett has sold Costco to Ray Dalio. How funny is that? So let's take a look at how the portfolio now stands. So this is actually just the top 50 positions of the portfolio. It's an $8 billion portfolio and there's actually 430 total positions. But once you start getting into the fractions of 1%, I just think it becomes less useful. So let me just strip away anything that's less than 1%. So this is a more manageable portfolio to see if we can get some insights from. So I won't go through all of them. I'll probably just talk about the main ones. So starting in the top right, this blue 19% position. So this was his Spider S&P 500 position, and this is what he reduced by 40%. Now position two and also position five are his gold ETFs. So he's got almost 20% in gold. So he clearly really likes gold. This is probably to hedge against all the money printing that's going on. As we saw, he's now got 6% in Alibaba. So he clearly likes that. And then we have these individual stocks. So a strong position in Walmart, Procter & Gamble, and then some smaller ones in Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, and PepsiCo. So let's see how this portfolio did against the S&P 500 as the benchmark. So what are we looking at? Well, is the bottom line is actually the S&P 500 and the top line is this portfolio. So you can see it tracked pretty closely all the way up to the pandemic. Then when we had the big sell off in March, we then saw this big divergence. Now, I think the biggest reason why this portfolio has outperformed the S&P 500 this year is to do with his gold position. So 20% of the portfolio is in gold and gold has had a really strong year. So that has saved the portfolio. A slightly longer time horizon. So this is the five year, but it's pretty much the same picture. You can see the divergence really comes this year and it's the gold that has rocketed the portfolio above the S&P. So there you are guys, those were the latest updates to Ray Dalio's Bridgewater portfolio. And as you saw, some very surprising moves. One of the biggest was this large reduction to US stocks. It does make me think, what does he know that we don't, right? He also did make big reductions to his China ETF, but then he did refocus that into Alibaba and emerging markets. And the emerging markets ETF do focus 50% on China, but they also include India and Taiwan as well. So probably more diversification. And the last point was them taking up large positions in individual stocks, including Walmart, P&G and Coca-Cola. So there you are, that was a lot of activity for one quarter. If you do wanna see the latest changes to the Warren Buffett portfolio, you can click here for those. Okay, just one favor to ask, if you did find anything in this video useful, be sure to drop a like, that would be much appreciated. If you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to click below and join us. I do have some great videos coming up that you don't wanna miss. Any questions or comments, just post them below. Okay, cheers guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.